welcome to Wake Up and Live with the Arts. I'm Sue Johnson with James McGilbray, our videographer. And in the studio, of course, I always like to give a shout out to Lester Bryant, our editor, uh, because all, it takes all of us to put together this show, Wake Up and Live with the Arts. And today we are back at the Cleveland Playhouse where Kristen Netsband, the PR and marketing director, has invited us to chat with a couple of her stars from the upcoming production of Pipeline. So if you are not busy, and make it a point not to be busy, from October 12th to November 3rd in the Alcott Theater to come see Pipeline featuring Kadeem Harris mm -hmm. and Jade... Bradford. Bradford. <laughs> you were supposed to fill in quicker than Got you, sorry. <laughs> Bradford. Yes. Hi. Hi, you two. How are you? Good. Good. Welcome to Cleveland. Welcome to the Cleveland Playhouse. Thank you. And wait a minute, I'm welcoming you to Cleveland, but where are you from, Jade? I'm born and raised from New Orleans, Louisiana. New Orleans. Nah, honey, New Orleans. Bring me some beignets. Oh, I, you are wearing my colors, though. You okay. almost Mardi Gras in it today. <laughs> well, we but, got a few months before we hit that. I know, yeah, yeah, we got a <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, but you know what I do watch NCIS uh, New, New Orleans, Orleans yes that, I have a few friends on that show yeah okay so I get a, a pretty good uh, TV picture of what New Orleans is oh, about oh yeah especially during Mardi Gras oh yeah it's yeah. a good time yeah. where are you from Kadeem uh, I'm from the Bronx Bronx from New the York Bronx, New yeah, York New York not too far from Manhattan and the yeah the yeah, yeah I was also raised in North Carolina as well though so I gotta rep that too oh okay Durham, now, which Durham, part Durham, Durham North Carolina yeah yeah I understand that during <clears throat> World War II mm -hmm. that I was a baby and my dad was stationed in a camp, you know, down uh -huh. there. Wow. And I understand I spent some time in, in Durham, in Durham, North yeah. Carolina. It's a beautiful city. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, what do I watch now? Oh, HGTV, where they shoot <laughs> oh. in D Raleigh, Durham. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I got connections. I oh, got yeah. Connections. Mm -hmm. And today we're connected with the play Pipeline being presented here at the Cleveland Playhouse. So tell me, Kadeem, how did you find this part? Uh, how did I find about this part? Uh, so... I got a call from um, a good friend of Steve Brodnick's uh, story, mm -hmm. uh, and she was telling me about the play, and I had known about the play for a long time, because uh, I had read it when it was at the American uh, Theater Magazine, and I like mm. fell in love with it. Okay. Um, and I wish I could have saw the New York production. Uh, but she told me about it, and um, she was like, would you be interested in this? And I'm like, yes, I definitely would be interested in this. And um, she told Steve Brodnick about me, and Steve, me and Steve had uh, worked together, and um, uh, basically a, a few months ago, we had did a reading together. Not together, but in the same group together. Yes. And then, uh -huh. so he had already known about me, and then they just asked me to be a part of the production. I was super, super excited about so it. So you didn't have to do a real audition process? Yeah, I feel like since yeah. me, I had auditioned for Steve in June, like uh -huh. a while back. Mm. Okay. Uh, so I think he like knew about my work before then, okay. and also my work in the reading too. So, um, yeah. So that was kind of your audition process. Yeah, yeah. You know, in this business, yeah. you're kind of always auditioning, mm. you know. For the rest of For the rest of your life, and everything that you do is an audition. Of you course. Know? Yep. So yeah. you know, people see your work in something else, and then they're like, oh yeah, I think this person would be perfect for this. I tell so, my yeah. actors, put the camera on me for just a minute James darling <laughs> okay I'm forever telling the actors that I coach at Wake Up and Live's Actors Studio to watch the work that they do and you never you never know who's in the audience you directors know. producers mm. stage managers choreographers mm. assistant directors agents people who are watching you perform and I even tell my film and and uh, TV type actors you must do theater if even if you don't really want to do that mm. as your focus do at least three to five plays because guess who's in the audience mm -hmm. and you might be seen so Kadeem is living testimony to that preaching and teaching that yeah. I do it with my actors so mm -hmm. Jade tell me a little bit honey about how did you come to this project I uh, I've never met Steve uh -huh. I had never uh, come in yeah I'd never met him and I got an audition to do a self-tape okay. and 
I got this off of a tape. Me wow. and Steve had never had any formal mm -hmm. uh, introduction like, to each other. So it was sort of, it was funny. We were talking a few days ago. Uh, we were walking home together. And he told me, he said, I saw your video and I knew that it was you. I was okay. like, I just, he said, I knew. He said, it's you. I said, wow. Like, that, that means a lot coming from you because yes. Steve's name is like, you know, a few directors I know are just like, he's working like crazy. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I get to work with him <laughs> <laughs> on this play. On I'm, this I'm a big play. Dominique Morisot fan. The first play I ever read by her was Sunset Baby. Mm -hmm. And so that like, oh, I, I remember sending her a message years ago saying that like, you know, this spoke, spoke to me. Um, and so yeah, I just I sort of uh, the the ancestors aligned, and I uh -huh. and I'm here <laughs> with my good friend. Did you know him before? Never no, knew, we never met each other. Well, actors are always just knowing yeah, each other. Right. Yeah, right. And you know, you get thrown around in different projects, and we have some mutual friends. Yeah. Ironically, yeah. we have All a lot of friends who know each other, and just yeah. like, wait, you and Kadeem should know each other. Yes. So we we do. Okay. <laughs> and Dominique Morso is the playwright. Yes. Of Pipeline, mm -hmm. which is the story of. Of a young man yeah. by the name of Omari. Yeah. Omari, Omari is your is, character. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, Omari is my character, and he's you know having some troubles in school right now. Uh, and it's really about a mother dealing with her son and how to um, how to you know nurture young black men. Yes. You know, in their in their um, troubling times, you know, when they're going through a lot of different things. So it's a lot about it's a lot of uh, issues about family. How to how to care for a young black male, you know, in a, um at you know a young age like uh, late teenage years, mm -hmm. uh, and also about to the school of prison pipeline as yes. well, and about how we, uh, you know, how, you know, one incident can end up ruining your whole life and your whole trajectory of what is possible for you to go. Absolutely, yeah. and I play his girlfriend, mm -hmm. uh, basically his and uh, your companion. name. I'm a uh, Jasmine, Jasmine in the play, yes, yes. Uh, uh -huh. and she is basically his. Companion, his confidant, yeah, his ride or die, die. Bonnie Clyde, Bonnie yeah, Clyde, yeah, yeah. and Jay. Uh, yeah, uh, she sort of supports him through this very mm -hmm. uh, hard time, and I think that uh, Dominique has a beautiful way of writing women as not just the uh, sidekick, but mm -hmm. we can control the car too. Exactly. Yeah, and, and, exactly. And I think their relationship is absolutely. I think it's very uh, universal to black love and young black love. I think that. You don't get to see that often. Um, positive black positive love. Black positive love. That's black not, love. That's not toxic. Yeah. Right, and right. They, and these characters are super smart, too. Yes, we they're love They're intelligent, science. and they love <laughs> science, and that is how they, um, their, their love is shown, through yeah. science and through uh -huh. their love of science, which is okay. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, th that's amazing. And the, the topic is so socially, actively timely. Yes. Because... Um, I, well, being a slightly different generation, I worry about our young black men in society and police interaction, community yes. relations, and you're right, for our young black males, mm -hmm. doesn't take but that much exactly. that you're ending up in the system. In the yeah. system, yeah, which Absolutely. changes the whole trajectory of where you're going, mm -hmm. or what is even possible for you to do, you right. know, because once you get caught up in the system, even things of, you know, you might have had dreams when you were a kid. You know, that it's just not possible based off of just like um, pure circumstance right. of like, oh, yeah, now you can't get a job. Right. You know? It's like at 16, you now have a record. You okay. Have, you know? Yeah. Yes. So sort you of. always have to check off that box. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah. I think it's interesting how you, black men, I don't feel, are allowed to have uh, coming of age. Mm. Uh, Good point. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. We aren't allowed to grow into ourselves, especially for black women. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, Dominique really touches on how our school system sort of aids in that mm -hmm. and how they uh, sort of uh, it's like one wrong thing. It's like you're a criminal, you're you're aggressive, you're the problem, you're an outcast. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like it, I think it addresses how uh, black men get disciplined harshly. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. In our school system. And, and and black mothers have to be there to defend. Usually, it's just the black mother there to defend. But ninety percent of the time, mm -hmm. that it is the black mom. Yep. Or, or the mom. It yes. doesn't have to. She doesn't have to be black one hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, and you know, the schools perpetuate. In my opinion, the schools perpetuate the. I'm going to use the word the ugly side. Mm. I used to be a high school teacher, and mm -hmm. I taught at Tri C, and so I've been around for a minute. 
But I don't. I could not last two and a half seconds in a school today where you go in mm. through metal detectors. Exactly. Where, yes. where there, some of the guards are armed, armed. Mm -hmm. you know, and then somebody from the current administration thought teachers ought to carry weapons. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> We're not going to talk about it's that. It's like person. Sandy Hook was enough. <laughs> and we have to have more guns. No, there's I more. I mean, there's more than Sandy Hook. <sighs> You know, one, one still cries over all of them, mm -hmm. you know, all of these situations. And one of the sorry things, uh, and I'm using that word, about our government, our country, mm -hmm. I'm, again, of an age where President Reagan's, uh, I think he's press secretary, Brady, who was his last name, got shot in the head, mm -hmm. and he did survive. But now, and at that point, that was 1980-something. And do you know, I knew then, I said, nobody's going to do anything about guns. Wow. It's 2000, almost 20. What are they doing about guns? Nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how, this is, I don't want to start getting on a soapbox. Mm -hmm. but, oh. it, but NRA, you know, which has control. But these, our, our society is beyond uh, belief when it when it comes to the issue of guns mm -hmm. and the relationship to I'm going to say young black males mm -hmm. in particular, yep. you know. So even with the Constitution, it's sort of like guns were were sort of a the Second Amendment. Yeah, the yeah, Second the Second, Second Amendment, Amendment. You know, America is not. I don't think they will ever give this up. Mm. Uh, you know, you, I, I truly believe the Constitution. That was like a very, I would have loved to be there to see <laughs> when, that, when it was 70, written. Yeah. I think, yeah. Oh, Second Amendment. I don't think anyone wants to uh, not have, uh, not be able to carry. And it's, yeah. it's sort of, it's sort of like a double-edged sword. How mm -hmm. do you protect yourself if anything happens? But also, you know, yeah. how do we keep each other safe in, in, yes. in public environments mm -hmm. and, and not have mass shootings and not, you know, have little kids in their in their kindergarten classrooms be killed, you know? Mm -hmm. How do we balance that, you know? Mm -hmm. and I, don't, I don't know if there'll ever be a middle ground. I, you know? I, I, I don't know either. I mean, it, it, I hate to say it seems hopeless, yeah, mm -hmm. but every day, every other day, you know, there's some new shooting and it just doesn't make sense. And it keeps being perpetuated. Yes. But now let's talk about some positive things, darling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Who's the mom in this play? Oh. Suzette uh, Gunn. She uh -huh. plays Naya. Naya. Mm -hmm. Ferocious. Uh -huh. Love her. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, Naya is uh, uh, she's a mother. She's also a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, she's also teaching teaching in a very you know tough, um, low performing school environment. Yes. So she's ha she's having to deal firsthand with young black men acting up in in, in school too as well. Mm -hmm. And also you know her and her um, ex former husband ex husband uh, chooses to to uh, put Omari in another private school thinking that's going to be better for him. Yes. Right. And then they find out that whoa. Maybe this isn't the right place. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the mother is like, you know, she's right now, she's in a really, really tough position of, of, of trying to care for her son, but also trying to teach students and trying to find a way to, to really get through. Like, what are the, what is the answer? Mm -hmm. Please tell me. And she actually says that to Amari in one of the scenes. Please tell me how to care for you. Tell me how to love you. Anything that you need, please tell me that. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to listen to you. Yeah. I've listened to everybody else, she says. But now I'm ready to listen to you. Oh, you know, okay. yeah. yeah. And, and like I, a lot of times, like, you know, as a as a young black man, you know, a lot of people don't really do that. Don't sit there and like really ask you what the answer. They think and when that they, black yeah. men aren't capable of, uh, you know, assessing their feelings. Yeah, that they're mm -hmm. just these angry. Yeah, people, you know. And yeah. then when you, you know, and then when Omari, you know, gets that, he has no, he has no answer for that because he's never really been answered that question. He's, he's never really had to think about that. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't even have the language right now to even answer that question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to be more specific, the boarding school that we both attend is mm -hmm. predominantly white. Exactly. Of course. And mm -hmm. so yes. I think that's another conversation that Dominique opens up, which is, you know, when you when you take your black child out of this public school where they're going to interact with themselves more, mm -hmm. and you put them in a space where they don't see themselves, how does that hinder their growth? Exactly. And how mm -hmm. does that, uh, how do they, how are they able to come into themselves? And that often is very hard. There was this uh, documentary we oh all sort gosh. of watched called American Son. And I it missed that one. Yeah, yeah. It, it takes yeah. place over, I think, 
10 years. Yeah, it's like 10 years from when they were like, I think, five or six yeah. until they graduated from high school. So okay. black boys that were in this very white public school and how they both, it just it just tracked their uh, their journey and, and, and education and how they sort of had to keep up with this very uh, high performing school and like they felt like, you know, the pressure, you know, that you feel at that age to get mm -hmm. good grades, but also like the pressure they felt as just being one of the, the only, only black, black men in, that, in that, that, yes. that, that environment and Mm -hmm. the, the prejudice that comes with that. Yeah. And, the, and the white uh, gaze that comes with the that. White gaze. And constantly have to think about your identity while you're trying to learn something new with all these hard pressures. You know, that's just yes. a hard situation. So socially, I remember there was one clip in there that talked about a young, uh, one of the young kids, and he was talking about dating, mm -hmm. right? And he was talking about, you know, when, when they, I think it was like their first dance when they were like 13 years old. And all the other girls wanted to dance with, uh, dance with the white students. And he was by himself and nobody wanted to dance with him. And then he was having a conversation with his parents, and he says, you know, things would be better if I was white, right? And they, you know, they, they don't have anything to say, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and they're like, is that what you think? He said, but that's the answer, right? Mm -hmm. Right? He, he's wanting confirmation, but they can't give that to him right now. Of course. Because they're thinking, you know, I'm going to put you in this school. Because you're going to get wonderful grades. We know that this good school education. is a great yes. education, mm -hmm. and this is going to lead to your future. Yeah, right. you know. Yeah, uh, you know. They find out that you know, maybe not. You know, it's not a clear answer. And one of the positive pieces of news, and I'm sitting here racking my brain, and it still hasn't come to me. The fellow who just paid for the all that whole black college of oh, black yes. uh, students, oh, the Morehouse, Morehouse, yes. the class, yes, oh, and yeah. that was the first, and their parents too. And their, in that, in, I mean, that it's was amazing. just so hope, uplifting yes. and heartwarming. I hope that trickles down. I hope that is a is a, a thing that happens every year. Well, and Oprah, I think she does contribute to education. Mm -hmm. Bill and Melinda, Melinda Gates, Melissa Gates, Melinda Gates, mm -hmm. they contribute in their way, but the guy who, and I can't think of his name, mm -hmm. who paid for yeah. this whole classes. HBCU. Yeah, HBCU. Th yeah. This helps, uh, people, uh, you know, what is so impactful about this is that this helps them for generations now. Yes. Oh, yes. The, you know, for their kids, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're helping one student, but now you've just helped, you know, uh, you know, you know, all their children and their children's children yep. so that they won't have to work off that debt for years. For years. Yeah, you know, you already have a leg up. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful. Yeah. And if you've been, if either of you've been to college, I don't know whether you're yes. still paying student mm -hmm. loans. Oh. And, yep. and nowadays, yes. I understand that student loans are paid for the next 50 years of your life, practically. Yeah, 25. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, when people were in school in the 70s, I'm pretty sure school tuition was the was basically rent right now. Right. You know. <laughs> and you can <laughs> work an tuition. extra job and like pay off, pay yeah. off your rent. That's not even and possible right now. And now tuition is like a mortgage. Oh yeah. yes. Oh yes, <laughs> and yes. I, my mother and I are, I think, in the same boat, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and I think that you, you want. I think talking about elections, you want. I want a president that's like trying to clear student loan debt. Yes, mm -hmm. like I want somebody that's actually trying <laughs> to like see people to not make it easier, make it easier yeah. for incoming students and you know us who are alumni mm -hmm. from our from our you know our programs. And so yeah, I think I totally think that like, that was such a act of courage and just like I think black and had to have a black man be in the, mm. for, the forefront of Friend that, that yeah. I think that speaks volumes and it put us ahead. It <laughs> sure did. Now as we're going to begin to wrap up shortly but the name of the play Pipeline, what does that refer to? Mm. Ooh. It refers to the school to prison pipeline. How okay, it, it's yeah. sort of it's a you think I think it's a journey. Yeah. It, it, it precisely, it's a journey of uh, sort of your your first day of kindergarten, and um, you know maybe you have white teachers, maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. But um, what's your? How do you identify? Yeah, the, cri the, the the criminalization of young black bodies from yes. when they are in kindergarten up until when they go to prison, and that when you put metal detectors in schools and you think it's for safety, what is that? Sound? What, yeah, what is that saying? What are you teaching your students? The environment. Who, who is really being protected in these environments, yes. right? Yes. Who, are yes. we, we, who are we protecting them from? Are we instilling right? fear in our children when they exactly. come to school every day? Yes. Are we instilling <laughs> uh, in them to...
to not feel as though they are worthy of a, mm -hmm. a you know a non metal detector environment or yeah. a non you know security armed gun you know having environment. Mm -hmm. Like, are we worthy of that? Yeah. You know, are black kids worthy of just going to school and being black kids and yeah. making mistakes and being able to get a slap on the wrist and 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 being able to grow and not being ridiculed immediately? Um, what's the, you know what's the word uh, uh put down put, yeah. you know put De down demonized. and just demonized yes. i think that mm -hmm. this Good pipeline word. Mm -hmm. yeah. pipeline is it, it really addresses how black kids we we face a lot of i think speaking from our own experiences we, yeah. we, we experience a lot of like things that I, I think at a young age we don't even know how to identify but we sort of have to grow up very fast in it's these like environments when yeah. you when when you you have to think about what, what you're training people to think about when they're in school mm -hmm. if you're training people to think and be scared of police officers and when you walk into an environment that is supposed to be a safe environment when you're training them to be taught as to be in prisoners which is what that is. You I have agree. Metal detectors. You constantly have security guards all you're over. You're searched. You're being you're searched. Being searched. You're being policed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are you training them to do? And the, they're not looking at you know they're not looking at security guards as like oh yeah you're gonna be my you know my best friend. You're like oh you're here because you think I'm a threat. And you're an authority. So how over me. yeah yes. how do we how do we change that dynamic? How do we change that from like a threat dynamic to actually a um, a friendly or a helpful dynamic? And the yeah. conversation of public versus private. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. what's so private about private schools mm -hmm. and what's so public about public, public schools? Public schools, yeah. You know, and why is it that children <coughs> of color only are allowed to be in public spaces and in a certain class and color can mm -hmm. only be allowed in private? I think that that's a very interesting <coughs> conversation. And that conversation, as I get through choking here, <laughs> <laughs> will be further explored in Pipeline Running from October 12th to November 13th third at the Outcult Theater here at the Cleveland Playhouse. So as we begin to leave, Kadeem, would you share some positive insight or advice? If you were the dad mm -hmm. of a, a minority or a child of color, particularly a male, yeah. and I'm going to ask you the same question, from the female perspective, what would you share with our audience on a positive note about what would you talk to your young minority male about yes if you um, were a dad love wow uh -huh. being there, being present mm -hmm. and 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 knowing how to love people need different ways of, of of loving knowing how to love asking your child how what do you need from me in this moment right now mm -hmm. you know and I, I think it's important, you know, that we change the, the shift of, of dynamic of how, you know, young uh, fathers talk to their young black males, males you know, uh, and we bring more love into it and caring and understanding and not just like the hard fist and the hard hand down mm -hmm. and that, you know, the hard authority that we need love and we, we need caring as well. Yeah. And I would love to see, I hope the demographics have changed. I've not checked them lately. Mm -hmm. More fully growed, that was from Pearly, fully growed mm -hmm. black men uh, being involved with their families, yes. not leaving their families, yes. staying married with mm -hmm. the woman who bore their children. Yes. Uh, I like, um, I, I, what I love about this cast is that um, I get to watch that with the cast, like outside of the play, mm -hmm. I'm watching um, um, one of the other actors in the show, Eric Robinson, uh, raise his his his, mm -hmm. his his kids and and, he, and talk about you know how he was raised versus you know how he wants to raise his children, you know, and that in changing and shifting that dynamic, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, see, I'm of a generation where fathers were generally around. It, mm -hmm. It's a newer, well, it's not that new, but a newer phenomenon about the single mom families mm. in history. In mm -hmm. him, because uh, my generation and maybe the one after, the families were a given. Together, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it was a given. So as a mom, what would you share with, with your young minority child? Um, I, coming from a single mother uh, household, I definitely would instill uh, self-love 
Mm-hmm. That I think is so key in uh, bringing up a child, letting them know that they are valuable, mm. that they have that their their existence has meaning and purpose. I want to instill in my young black man um, to respect women mm-hmm. because we are your creators. Yes, uh, I want to instill in him uh, to never be afraid of his blackness as well because that's mm-hmm. what makes him beautiful and strong. Mm. And I think that uh, gen- breaking generational cycles and patterns and sort of knowing what I came from and what I didn't have mm-hmm. and giving him basically the world, but also knowing, letting my son know as well, when you make mistakes, you have to also hold yourself accountable. Mm-hmm. You Accountability, I think, is key. Both of you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one of the other things that I suggest when I'm working with young uh, minority males and I know this is from an old person's perspective, but please don't wear your pants around your <laughs> kneecaps. Hell down. Don't don't wear hoodies, you know, mm. covering up your face because guess what that invites? Guess who shows up looking for you? Mm-hmm. It's called your your neighborhood police person. George mm. Zimmerman. Uh, good uh, well. well <laughs> There's so many examples in our oh, society, yes. and yet the positive is not often brought up to the top so that we get to see that there is good, you know. And this cast, let me share with you some of the cast in this play. Rachel Harker plays Lori. Oh, Kadeem Ali Harris. Mm-hmm. I see his name. Yes. Uh, Colleen Longshaw, Longshaw uh, she works here. We've interviewed mm-hmm. her. And she's Naya. Oh, she's the mom. Yeah, she's she, understudy. She's, she's Und- understudy. Oh, yeah. the understudy. Okay. Yeah. And oh, I see Jade Radford is here. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got uh, Comfort Dolo and Bjorn Dupate. Dupate. Yes. Yeah. Suzette Azaria Gunn. And Abdul Saidu. Mm-hmm. Boy, this is a rounded out cast. Oh, you yeah. know? So as we begin to bring this edition of Wake Up and Live with the Arts to a close, thanks to Kadeem Harris and Jade Rat- Radford. Yes. I got it. <laughs> you got I it. got it. <laughs> <laughs> for joining us for uh, this beautiful story pipeline, which we hope you will come and support. And again, we thank Kristen Netsban and Harmony Taylor from the PR department for making sure that we bring you our show, Wake Up and Live with the Arts, and as we say, every day. Till next time, see ya.